You may have heard the saying, all is fair in love and war. People mostly used it to justify their wrongdoing. But today, we're going to take a look at a woman who considered everything fair in her love of humanity during the crisis of World War I. A young British nurse named Edith Louisa Cavell decided to treat the wounds of both her own people as well as the Germans and their allies during the ruthless bloodshed that took place in World War I. Edith was born in a village of Swaterston, Norfolk, and she was the eldest of four children. She studied at Norwich High School for girls and then went on to serve as governess for families in Brussels for a few years before ultimately deciding to start her journey of becoming a nurse, a decision she made after her father fell ill. In 1896, at the age of 30, she applied for the position of nurse probationer at the London Hospital. This is where she gained a lot of hands-on experience in the field, treating people for a range of different medical problems such as cancer, pneumonia, and appendicitis. During Edith Cavell's days, nursing was not considered as an established profession, and thus she is seen as one of the founders of modern nursing education in her country. Her father would later pass away, and around the same time she was visiting her widowed mother back in Norfolk was when the First World War broke out. She realized that she would be much more useful in Belgium, so she decided to return. Even after the occupying Germans in Belgium made it abundantly clear that those found helping the enemy would face strict punishment, that did not stop Edith from doing what she felt was right. Around September of 1914, Edith took it upon herself to help two British soldiers trapped behind German lines. She treated and sheltered the men in her hospital, before pretty much smuggling them out of Belgium, and then back into the neutral Netherlands. She became part of a network of people who aided and abetted Allied soldiers, and arranged for their escape. Over the course of the next several months, she helped around 200 British, French, and Belgian soldiers sheltering them in a hospital and arranging for guides to take them to the border. Unfortunately, it was only a matter of time before she was caught, and on August 5, 1915, she was arrested for aiding Allied soldiers and placed in solitary confinement at St. Giles Prison. Edith was tried on the 7th of October, 1915, alongside 34 other people connected to the escape efforts. She was found guilty and sentenced to death. Diplomats from Spain and the United States tried to step in on her behalf to have the sentence commuted, but all their efforts were to no avail. She was executed by a firing squad in Brussels on October 12, 1915. An uproar of commendation from all across the world began after her death, and it also received notable coverage from the media and the press. She is still celebrated to this day as a hero for treating soldiers, without any discrimination, and for being part of the organization that helped all those allied soldiers escape out of German-occupied Belgium. Her execution was legal under international law due to the charges against her, but that did not stop the people from idolizing her as a symbol of allied cause in both Britain and the United States. Her photos were used in recruitment posters as an ode to her memory, as well as in other messages around the world. The world has a very fond memory of hers as someone who chose humanity and compassion over the hatred, anger, and bloodshed that is commonly associated with war. The night before she was shot and executed for her quote-unquote crimes, she said, Standing as I do, in view of God and eternity, I realize that patronism is not enough. I must have no hatred or bitterness towards anyone. That message still holds so much meaning, negating all the boundaries of nationality and race, and speaking for the common ground which we all share, humanity. Her words were later engraved on a memorial dedicated to her as a tribute to her courage and bravery. Her strong beliefs were a big factor that led her to help everyone who needed it. She holds a place in the calendar of saints of the Church of England on the 12th of October. But anyway, that's all for today's video. Be sure to let us know what you think about this story, as well as subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest uploads. Bye for now.